And welcome, welcome to Queensborough Community College and this very, very special day when we officially dedicate the New York State Senate papers of Senator Frank Padovan, who is, um, for many people, history. For us, he's a very special, special partner in so many things that have happened at Queensborough, happened because of his leadership. Senator Padovan served the New York State legislature for a number of years. You all know that. And he achieved incredible, incredible things on behalf of the people of New York State, of Queens in particular. I think knowing him for the last, I'm not sure how many years, I can say that he made a personal mark on Queensboro with his support for so many of our initiatives, in particular for what is now the Kupferberg Holocaust Resource Center. For many years, it was a small little room in the basement of this building. And for many years, if it weren't for Senator Padovan, we would not have been able to sustain it to the point where we could launch, again, through his incredible leadership, a capital project to bring our Kupferberg Holocaust Center up to the front part of the campus where it, it really represents a beacon of light and certainly it reflects, I think, the ideals that Senator Padovan holds that for all people there's respect and there is a good life possible. His work is well known in so many areas, certainly for mental health initiatives, steering us through the fiscal crisis of the years which rocked New York City, but we made it through, and we're so happy that we have, for all of our students, our faculty, and for the public, the researchers of history of New York State legislation, that you all can come and take a look at the incredible, incredible work accomplished by Senator Frank Padovan. Professor Jean Galvin has personal um, remembrances of the work of Senator Padovan. I'd like to introduce her. Uh, before I do that, let me just say that I appreciate so much the work of our librarians. As you know, uh, there is a wonderful uh, retrospective downstairs of, of Senator's uh, accomplishments, and you're welcome to view that. Senator, Senator, Professor Sarah Marcus was uh, responsible for putting that together. And Professor Connie Williams. Connie, where are you? There you are. Connie Williams worked on the archives with the senator for months and months and months, and it's a labor of love for her. I so appreciate what you did uh, on behalf of the senator's work. So we couldn't do this without uh, the support of our library. So much, so important to all of us libraries, right? And this is an example. Professor Galvin, our chief librarian. Thank you, Diane. And thank you, everyone, for coming today. Thank you, especially Senator Padovan, for giving our students this valuable resource. Um, I'm a librarian. That's what I, my first job here. And I like students to be able to look at primary sources, the actual documents. Now, when a student comes in and wants to do work on an environmental issue, a mental health issue, or countless other issues, we don't just give him a book or, or a website about this. We can say, well, in New York State, this is how the legislation came to be. You can look at exactly what happened and because the person who did it was so generous as to give us his papers. So I thank you very much for your work on behalf of our students. Um, in particular, uh, you've done a lot for people with mental disabilities, and that's touched many lives. And again, all I can say is thank you so much, Senator, for your generosity to our college. Diane? Many of you have known Senator Padovan in different aspects of his life. His daughter, Allison, is here from Spain. Allison, it's nice to have you back here. Thank you so much. 
and colleagues who have worked with the senator over the course of the years are also here. Councilman Dan Halloran, welcome. Nice to have you back. And Senator, Senator, sorry, Assemblyman, I always mix them up, Assemblyman, now Councilman. Now Councilman. But when he was an Assemblyman, I asked for it, don't worry. that's right, when he was an Assemblyman, he did work with the Senator uh, along with the Queen's delegation on many things that, that the Senator uh, led on our behalf, and I appreciated it. Councilman Mark Weprin. But this day is really about Senator Padavan, and so I hope you'd come up and speak to us. And again, we really appreciate everything you've done, every event for so many years. You've heard the phrase, my life has flashed before me. Well, President Kyle Diana, I thank you so much for your leadership, along with uh, Professor Galvin and Constance Williams. Where are you, Constance? There she is, my buddy. A number of years ago, I was with uh, our past president of the college, Professor Marty, whom I'm sure many of you know. And uh, we were having a long discussion and I was lamenting the problems that I saw ahead of me someday when I would leave office. They expected as soon as it happened, but I was thinking about it. And I said, you know, I have in my office in Albany, in a storeroom and in file cabinets, and also down here, huge amount of stuff, documentation that is not available anywhere else. City's fiscal crisis, a number of years, all the things that went on, in Albany and City Hall, the total reorganization of the Office of Mental Health. The list goes on and on. I said, I'm just concerned about where that's all going to end up. And because my garage is only so big. He said, why don't we have an archive? I said, really, are you serious? Yes. So over a period of years, at my office in Albany and down here, cataloged the important stuff, things that had meaning, that were landmark, that you couldn't find anywhere else necessarily, cataloged it and put it in boxes and shipped it down here. And over the last couple of years or so, Constance has been busy with her, her, her able assistants, putting it together. And when you go into those two rooms downstairs, the main room and the auxiliary room, and you see how they have cataloged that, it's truly amazing. I can tell you, my office never looked like that. But it looks like it now. A lady's right here can tell you that. <laughs> but in an event, we're grateful, not for myself, but for the fact that 50 years from now, someone might be doing some basic research about the city of New York and its fiscal crisis. We're trying to understand how the Office of Mental Health is the way it is today, how we moved some 80,000 people out of state institutions into the community, under what auspices was that done, how was it done, all of that will be there for them to look at. Now, of course, obviously, no legislator does this alone. Uh, you work with a variety of individuals all over, particularly in Albany. Pleasure of working with Mark and his father, whose name you will see in many of the documents downstairs on issues that we were involved in, like the Queens Farm Museum, transferring that state property, 50 acres, to the city of New York, and now the most used facility of its kind anywhere in the state. And all of these issues, all are there, and are all downstairs in those rooms. So I thank you for coming today and sharing this moment with us. And uh, I hope you enjoy the visit. And please come back. And by the way, Anna talked about the Holocaust Resource Center. Up there on the hill to the right is a stone. And in the stone there's a plaque. And next to it is a bench. And next to the bench is a tree. So if you drive in here one day, you may see me sitting there on that bench looking out over the field. Thank you very much. Thank you.